Let's talk about book notes because I'm going to show you this template that I made on an app called Notion, where I take all my thoughts and the insights that I scribble in the margins of my books and I integrate them. So they're always right at my fingertips, wherever I'm at. And this is how I remember all the things in the books that I read. It's a free template. Link's going to be down in the description. So let's hop over to Notion and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So what is Notion? Well, if you're watching this, you're probably already familiar with it, but I I think of Notion as this note-taking slash database slash content generation app. And the big difference is the toolkit that Notion gives you to customize your experience in the app. There's no cookie cutter system you're forced into. You can build everything yourself. It's really user-friendly in a very intuitive way to organize your book notes. I really wish I had a note-taking system like this one years ago. It would have saved me a lot of time. So what's the setup? This is the big picture overview over here on the left. You can see I have everything sorted out into three main buckets. And then I have my favorites column over here. And this is where I keep all the book notes from the books that I've read in 2023. And on the page, I have a inline database of all the books that I've read for 2023. So if we scroll here to the bottom, it looks like I've read 25 books this year. And I am definitely a slow reader, uh, quality over quantity for me. And um, I'm okay with that. So the way that I set this database up in these categories that I have listed up here, help me to kind of organize the information. So everything is chronological. Uh, I have the title of the book I read, its author. Sometimes I list the date finished here on the right. I haven't been keeping up with that like I should. And then these two categories are important for future reference. So the first is tags, and that's really just the genre of the book. Uh, I've created some different categories so I can keep up with the types of books that I'm reading. And the second category is the read again category. And I didn't really start doing this until halfway through the year. And I found that useful because later down the road, I may want to return to some of these books to read them again. And this is kind of an indication of my first impressions of the book, reading it for the first time. And now let's go through how I set this template up so we can create a new book title here at the bottom. I'm going to type in the book that I have here, Man's Search for Meaning. So we'll type in Man's Search for meaning, Victor Frankel, nonfiction, and philosophy. Once we have that created, we can press this open button here on the right. And now we have a new page where I can start to put in the notes that I've taken from reading this book. So one of the main reasons I love Notion is because I can make templates and I've created this template for my book notes. It's called Reading Reflection Template, specifically for nonfiction books. And all I have to do is click this magic template button and voila. So as you can see, I've already done all of this work to create these different categories and layers of knowledge that I can filter my book notes into. And we'll go through this template step by step. So here, the first thing that you'll see is the big picture. Now, I'm not going to start with that. I actually go through the book and the notes systematically. And then at the end, at the top of the page, I put one takeaway, one impression that's going to stick with me from reading this book. So we'll start here with the background info. This is really just for general information about the book. I have information like what was the time period? Where were they? Where, where was the book written? Or what was the period that it was written? And personal details. That's anything that I think is relevant or interesting about the author that may have influenced their work. And one of these amazing and very subtle features I love about Notion is this ability to create toggles. Uh, it helps you to consolidate information and it also helps for revision whenever you're trying to test yourself on what you know. And it's really easy to do. You just go to a new line. Let's say that I've created a new line here and all you do is press the backslash button and then you type toggle. And there you see we have a toggle list option and we just click that or press enter and there it emerges and we can just type good idea. But let's go back here and we'll talk about man's search for meaning specifically. So what was the time period? The book was written in the 19... When was this book published? Okay, originally published in 1959. Where were they? Viktor Frankl lived in Austria. He was from Austria. And personal details. He was a psychiatrist. And he was a prisoner of war in the Nazi 
concentration camps. Then the next section is structure and content. And this is really the meat and the substance of the book. I've separated it into two categories, methodology and framework. The first is methodology. This is really about what was the main question the author was asking and what was their hypothesis? What did they think was a solution to that question? We have quantitative methods where you can talk about polls, surveys, any sort of numerical data and qualitative methods where we can list things like case studies, interviews, stories, any sort of personal or social details that the author uses to kind of elaborate on their point and experimental methods. So did they actually test their hypothesis? Did they analyze any data? And if they did, what were the results? Next is frameworks. And this one is all about um, models and analogies that the author uses. This one is really useful because anything that's abstract that the author uses to formulate or to provide a scaffolding for their arguments, this is a great way to evaluate those cases. There's a really great analogy Frankl uses in the book that I still remember. He talks about being the plaything of circumstance. And he uses that as an illustration of the final consequences of the nihilism and the cynicism that he saw driving a lot of his fellow prisoners in the camps. After that, there's a section for favorite quotes. And this is just a place to house all of the different uh, excerpts that I took away from the book. I've gone ahead and I've labeled a few of these. Meaning is definitely a central topic of the book. So there's a lot of quotes about that. Nihilism and cynicism is also a really important topic of the book and you could add any other topics that you want to. Great way of organizing the different quotes in the book so that you can use them as a reference later on. One of the quotes I really love is, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, the ability to choose one's actions in any given situation. Now, if I'm looking for a quote on meaning, I can go here, press that toggle, and there it is every time. Next, we have eye openers. And I just added this section recently. I think it's really important to identify when you've learned something that you didn't know before, or if your thinking has been corrected in some way. And this is really what this section of the template is for. The prompt here is, did reading this book allow you to see something from a new perspective? Next, we have a section called big ideas. And that is my way of distilling all of these quotes that I took from the book into big ideas that I can use going forward. We always wanna make abstract concepts and ideas actionable insights that can influence our lives going forward. And this is the section that I use for that. Next after that, there's questions for the author. And that's any time I have a question that comes to my mind while I'm reading a book, and I don't find the answer in the book, I'll list that question here so that I can go back later and kind of investigate a little bit further. It's a great way of critiquing the author's thought process. So we have a section for new words and I love to keep a running list of all the different words that I didn't know before that I learned while reading the book. And last but not least, we have thoughts after reading. And I may just write down one or two things like I enjoyed reading this book or this book was a little bit too long, things like that so that I can keep them for future reference. And now that we've done all that, now that we've evaluated the book, taken all of our notes out of the margins and put them here into this template, now we can get to what I think is the most important part of reading, which is the big picture. This is where we distill all this information and put it into one insight or actionable step that we can use to improve our lives. And the main idea that has stuck with me for years since I read this book is that in between any stimulus and response lies a space. And in that space is the ability to choose one's actions. Oh, almost forgot a little detail. There's a really cool option to add icons. And all that I do in that situation is just look for a cover for the book. This one looks pretty good here. Right click, copy the image address. And then here where you see this icon, I can click this button custom and I can paste that link, press submit. 
And now we have a little cover for the icon that we can use as reference on the database here. That pretty much wraps it up. If you found this template that I've made useful, it's completely free. There's gonna be a link down here in the description where you can check it out. And if you wanna learn how to make one of these custom Notion templates on your own, I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.